Our top story leading this morning's Smart Start, everyone. The state attorney general's office has now released new body camera video from that Christmas Eve shooting in Rochester, where a police officer shot and killed 46-year-old Todd Novick. A warning first, this video can be disturbing. Like the video released by RPD, this video also shows Novick running from officers and reaching for something at his waistband before he was killed. But the AG's version now shows even more of the moments after Novick was shot. And in that additional time, which RPD did not release, you can hear Novick saying that he was trying to drop the replica gun that he had on him and he apologized. He did die at the hospital and the AG's office is reportedly still investigating as per state law. A registered sex offender accused of raping a teen girl in Rochester entered a not guilty plea during arraignment. This man, 47 year old Kelvin Hunt, is accused of breaking into a 14 year old's home, raping and kidnapping her before then assaulting her again in a different location. Hunt here appearing in court and was immediately identified by investigators as being known to the family. He's currently a level two sex offender already from a 1995 sexual abuse conviction involving a minor and was also on parole for a 2004 weapons charge. These are very serious allegations without getting into too many details because this is still a very active investigation. There were uh, several several crimes committed against a child, um, which is extremely upsetting for the community when things like this happen. Prosecutors say Hunt could face federal charges due to that kidnapping allegation, and there's also a preliminary hearing scheduled for this Friday at 2 p.m. A Rochester man will be back in court today facing additional charges after investigators say he purchased stolen customer information from an online marketplace. Police say 23-year-old Brandon Hall bought 12 packages on Genesis Market between November 2019 and February 2021. Those packages had information from more than 1,000 accounts. Investigators also saying that this stolen data is from more than 10 different platforms, including Citibank, Venmo, and Amazon. Hall being charged with possessing 15 or more unauthorized access devices. After a report claimed that leaders at the Brockport Central School District mismanaged their funds, the superintendent tells the public they believe they acted responsibly. Superintendent Sean Bruno defended the district against the accusation from the state comptroller's office, saying that the district had asked for a tax increase while also bringing in a surplus totaling more than $20 million. Bruno argues the district was trying to take a conservative budgeting approach and that when coupled with financial challenges of the pandemic and other factors, that led to the surplus, adding they were going to use the money to save taxpayers on future projects. A state Supreme Court judge has ruled that all registered voters across New York State can now cast your ballots by mail during the next early voting period. This decision says that the legislature did not overstep its authorities by passing a package of voting laws last year. Advocates applauding this ruling, saying that the law helps improve turnout, but Republicans still claim the state needs a constitutional amendment in order to expand absentee voting. They plan to appeal. And beforehand, voters also needed to have a specific reason to vote by mail up until now, such as being sick or being out of town on Election Day. There's a family already struggling to meet some basic needs now dealing with an additional tragic loss after Sunday. 40 year old Randy Peterson here on your screen now the right side there. He was hit and killed by uh, while riding his bike in Parenton near State Route 31 and Courtney Drive. We did speak with his wife and family who say that Peterson was on his way to pick up medication when he was hit. His wife tells us the two had already been struggling to make ends meet and they had three children all displaced from their home and recently lost their cars. The victim's sister speaking with one of his daughters after the crash as well. She says, I don't know what to do. My dad did everything for me. He did everything and I don't know what to do. You know, and I'm there and seeing her and like, you know, she doesn't have the greatest situation. And back to kind of what Alyssa said, you know. They all deserve to just all be together and be at peace. The family says the funeral will be Monday and they've already set up a GoFundMe. We've provided that link for you on RochesterFirst.com. New this morning, a story about local teachers given access to a resource trying to help them create their lessons plans and include more about racist policies in the past of the greater Rochester area, shed some light and insight. Ron Spitzer speaking with the co-director of that project, learning how the tool works, joining us live in studio now to explain Iran. Yes, the anti-racist curriculum project helps teachers talk about the history of Rochester from redlining and racial covenants to points of resistance and the racist policies that shaped it. It's an open source interactive tool 
tool allowing users to get information about the different neighborhoods in the greater Rochester region. The curriculum is a result of a collaborative project called Resistance Mapping. It includes teacher instruction, student handouts, and a documentary on residential segregation in greater Rochester. I spoke with Shane Wiegand, the co-director of the Anti-Racist Curriculum Project and former elementary school teacher, who tells me he kicked off the project after a fourth grader approached him asking if Martin Luther King came to Rochester. He says he didn't know, but after he found out, decided the community needed more information. When we talk to community members and parents who voice a concern or are wondering, is this indoctrination? Or are you trying to tell my kid which politics they should have? And we, we show them the sources. We show them, no, this is about inquiry. This is about giving your kid the tools to decide what matters to them. This is about our community, our adults, uh, having that same idea as well and just having more information to think critically and make informed decisions. The virtual 2024 Greater Rochester Anti-Racist Education Conference, sponsored by local colleges and hosted by the Anti-Racist Curriculum, is on March 2nd. This year's theme is Joy, Community, Sustainability, and Resistance. You can register online. Michaela, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Aran. Let's turn now to our sunrise traffic here at 655. We have uh, one uh, thing to report. Uh, closed due to police activity, Ridgeway Avenue, eastbound, westbound in Rochester between Marigold Street and Primrose Street. We're still working to learn if that is due to an accident or some other reason for that police presence. We will keep you updated. Things picking up here over the west side, but so far no accidents to slow you down. And our traffic maps remain green. How are our skies, Leanne? Just barely starting to lighten up right about now. Barely the clouds will be sticking around for the morning hours, but then we will see the sunshine once again. I mean, we'll this is like that. five days now of sunshine, and you see our temperatures are actually going to continuously to get warmer and warmer wow. heading into the end of the week and into the weekend. We'll have to deal with a little bit of rain, but hey, you know what? Who cares? <laughs> temperatures are going to be nice. And then temperatures start to trend back down, and it seems like our next day of potential winter activity will be Tuesday. All right, but you want to clear out just in time for Valentine's. Valentine's. Yep. We'll keep you ahead of that. Thank you so much for sharing your morning with us here on News 8 at Sunrise, everyone. Next update in 30 minutes, and CBS Mornings is next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.